Hey guys, it's J19, brought to you yeah, another uh, game podcast, I am back. Um, if you guys didn't watch my other video I uh, put out this morning, uh, not this morning, but this afternoon. Um, but updates for my channel, I am back to making videos. Uh, so the first one tonight is going to be the gaming podcast. Uh, what am I going to cover? Um, it's on the title. Uh, I'm going to be covering what I saw of last month's gaming events that I saw. Uh, Monster Hunter Wild. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth stuff. I am going back through that game. My Resident Evil 4 Remake review. And much, much more. I don't know how long this podcast will be. But I'll try to not make it super long unless you're into that kind of thing. So with that said... Uh, you guys missed it. I was busy doing haste uh, work. I work on a farm. It was a busy time of year. Lots of stuff has happened. Um, so I haven't been able to do a lot of stuff. As you guys can tell. I've been off for like over a month. And I haven't streamed in a long, long time. Uh, so as far as streaming wise. I still need to like work on like a setup. I want to get a layout. Um, that suits me. Um. So I'm still working on it. I thought I had one long, long time ago. Of course, I deleted Twitch. I just recently just made another one. So not a lot of you have it. Um, it is twitch.tv slash jshugs89. Um, so feel free to give me a follow on there. Um, I do plan on doing some streams here and there once I get my setup ready to roll. But I'm definitely looking forward to coming back and doing more videos for you guys. Um, I do have... Ideas for Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 3. Uh, some ideas, like some things I want to see in Part 3. Um, go over some things that Rebirth did extremely well on. And some things I think that they can do. Um, some things I, I may... Uh, I'll probably just go ahead and put this in the podcast as well. So yeah, with that out of the way, um, I'm doing fine. i am definitely got some time to make some videos now. Uh, so it's just a little bit of housekeeping stuff for this first part here. Um, but yeah, here I am making a podcast. Uh, anyway, let's get right on with the show. So, last time you guys saw me make a video was either the, a later or earlier this afternoon or the Summer Games Fest reaction. You guys probably saw me. The Summer Games Fest was pretty good. Um, but Monster Hunter Wilds blew my mind. And then we had, uh, we had hands off impressions. Uh, I watched. A few of those, I watched uh, the community, like the Capcom Monster Hunter community managers talk to uh, Ruokan um, on his channel. They did like a little bit of a podcast, went through some stuff. Um, I'm not going to go on through all the details of Monster Hunter Wilds, but I'm going to share my hype for it. Um, I thought Monster Hunter Wilds looks wild. It looks insane. It's one, it looks like it's going to be one of Capcom's most ambitious titles uh, for the franchise of Monster Hunter. And I was worried if there's like gonna take on like the route of like Monster Hunter Rise a little bit, but no, it looks like they're going more more of like grounded based Monster Hunter like World was, and I absolutely love it. Uh, they showed off a total of like four or five monsters within the last like two three trailers we had, um, and they're all brand new. Uh, the only one that's returning is Raffalos. We do have. I guess Raffian's going to be involved because when there's Raffalos, there's Raffian. So we got those two. Um, everybody's flipping out about that one that one lightning wyvern looking thing. But so be like, oh, is that the flagship? No. Uh, apparently the devs did come out and say, that's not the flagship. That's just like an apex of the Windward Plains of like the lightning sandstorm. So that makes me think that we are going to get a whole bunch of like different apex at different time of day. Um, and we have not seen the flight yet. And we got another trailer and hands-on demo showcases for next month. For at Gamescom opening night live. They're gonna probably have another trailer there, they they confirm. And then during the Gamescom dev stuff, they're gonna have hands-on like media and Germany that showed up can actually get their hands on the game and play it. So we'll have first impressions of hands-on. Uh, said just like what they saw with their eyes, they actually say, hey, this is how the game feels in my hand. This is how hunts feel like. Uh, this is why I think of this. So seeing it, now I can get my hands on it. Um, that's going to be great. So we're going to probably see new footages because what we saw, what we heard, uh, people talk about it. Like It's like, hey, you think we're crazy, but this game looks 
like the trailers don't do this game justice like this game looks bonkers it's like the re engine is kicking butt and it's looking very good i i can't wait i want to see this game big time so i'm super hyped for that if you're wondering why i haven't made any videos on monster Hunter wilds i wanted to i guess just so busy stuff just came up i had to take a break anyways like mentally and stuff like that so anyways i'm super hyped for monster Hunter wilds it became my most ambitious title for 2025 my most anticipated not ambitious um i thought maybe it was gonna get resident evil 9 reveal but at the Capcom showcase, they had like Resident Evil 7 for iOS, which is uh, iPhone. They also got it for Mac. And meanwhile, the the director of Resident Evil 7 said that he is working on a brand new Resident Evil game. So that's that's exciting. Um, so Capcom's got some stuff coming out. Uh, got some things in the works. Is as uh, it's gonna carry on their legacy again. Like this is crazy how like. Year after year after year, they're making banger after banger after banger, and they're just making raking in money. They're giving employees like raises and stuff like that. It's like, why can't Square do that? Um, because Square Enix is struggling a little bit. Um, they're taking on to do business uh, uh, idea like mindset where they're gonna start stop uh, start stop. They're going to not take any more time exclusive deals from Sony or any other company. They're going to go multi-platform. And they should have done that years ago. I do like how Final Fantasy was like on PlayStation first and like get the chance to play it. And that's why I had a PlayStation as well. For I had to get a PS4 Pro. So I was going to play Remake. I was going to... I had PS4 a long time ago and I sold it. But I got the Pro back it's because of Final Fantasy 7 Remake coming up. Um... But I've always been a PlayStation guy. If you guys know me, I always love PlayStation. I did grow up on Nintendo as well. Um, I do like Xbox. I have an Xbox Series X. Um, because I tell you what. I had a lot of high expectations for the Xbox Showcase. Um, and I watched it finally. Like a few weeks ago. I was going to do a reaction to it. And again, I got busy. Um, anyways, I was like. What are they going to show us? And all the games they showed us on the Xbox uh, Game Showcase, I am super, super hyped, super excited. Um, Fable looks nuts. Black Ops 6 looks incredible. Black, looks like Black Ops is back. The Omni Movement looks sick. Um, Gears of War E-Day looks sick. Um, uh, Doom, the Dark Ages look pretty incredible. Um, what else? There's a lot of games. Like, Perfect Dark looks insane. Looks amazing. Starfield got an update that came out, like, the day of, like, or the following night. Um, we, Indiana Jones, The Great Circle looks incredible. I know a lot of people are not happy about the game, but for me, it feels like an Indiana Jones. It has some, like, some some humor, sense of humor in there that, like, Indiana Jones would crack in the, in the movies. Um, it was funny. Um, I did like the sequence that they showed. Um, there are some new games on there, like the South, South of the, uh, South of something. Um, I forgot the name, so bear with me. I should have wrote things down, but it's a lot of games on there. I was like, whoa, this looks incredible. This looks sick. Um, the Diablo 4, like, new update, new expansion, uh, is, uh, was it called? The Vessels of Hatred? Uh, that cutscene was nuts. Like, to see the, the CGI trailer, it's like, holy crap, man. Like, this is incredible. Um, I think Xbox nailed it. They show off a lot of their Xbox games, studios, that are like Fallout 76 is getting expansion, um, and so on and so forth. Like, that to me told me that Xbox is, like, it, it, they, heard, they heard enough, right? They heard enough and said, hey, our games will finally be able to be shown. Um, a, uh, was it Elwood that also got shown as well? Um, so Xbox showcase really blew my mind. It's like it makes me happy that I got Xbox. I got the Game Pass off, of it. so I can play those games, try them out. If I like them, I might buy them. Right? I'm super hyped for those games. Um, I was, like, yeah, this is what I wanted in a Xbox showcase. The state of play. You guys know me. Uh, I think the state of play is fine. Uh, I think Silent Hill 2 remake looked good. Uh, Astro Bot Until Dawn, uh, remake. Um, I'm still waiting for release dates for like uh, 
Until Dawn remake. Um, Silent Hill 2 remake is coming out October, uh, was it? October 8th? Yeah. We got that. Astro Bot's coming out. I pre ordered that. Pre ordered the Dragon Quest uh, 3. Uh, was it? Yeah. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. I ordered that for PlayStation 5. Um, the, the Nintendo Direct. I watched that as well, and it was it was, it was great. Um, they brought a lot of heat. They uh, it wasn't as strong as the Xbox showcase because the Zelda game where you actually play a Zelda, not Link. I thought this uh, a nice change, but it ain't something that I'm into. Um, the new Mario Party game, um, I thought that looks great. Um, but the but the biggest thing that really stole the show for me, it, it wasn't just like. You know, the, the Zelda, the Mario, and, and Donkey Kong uh, Country Returns is coming back, which is cool and all, but I'm still looking for that new mainline title for Donkey Kong Country, uh, Donkey Kong Mainline. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, the one thing that really stole the show for me, and a lot of people, was that Capcom had the audacity to not only show off a a collection of fighting games and stuff like that but it was marvel versus capcom fighting collection fighting games collection and it wasn't just that marvel versus capcom 2 game is back and apparently is the best version of the game um they did put in some extra stuff in it like um i was watching max's max million dudes video about he's breaking down what version it is it does have a training mode involved, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I did snatch the physical copy of the game. I pre-ordered that uh, because Wario 64 goes, hey, if I was you, I would snag a co physical copy of this game because it might be a collector's item. Um, so anyways, I got that pre-ordered. Pre-order Astro Bot. That looks incredible. Um, so I'm really super excited for that. Um, there are, was a lot of things going on with like the Final Fantasy IX. Um, I guess I'll talk about that for a quick minute. Final Fantasy IX uh, rumors and speculations, not speculations, but like leaks are coming out. Um, apparently, uh, this game could be split up in two. Um, they could talk, they potentially could change the story up a little bit. Um, what else? Uh, like, there's not going to be any outer continents. Um, there's also talk about like, a few other things like the game is i guess the game is uh in-house with square enix uh they didn't really trust the outside source uh outside dev, dev team they chose so it's in-house so when that happens usually square said all right this we got to make this right so all these leaks all these rumors about hey it could be swept in two parts um it's gonna be it's gonna be relatively the same they're gonna be like a turn base it's not gonna be like action um, Yoshi P goes, if I was making the Final Fantasy IX remake, I would make sure it's, you know, I would make it turn-based, not action. So, is he hinting something? Is he hinting that um, maybe Final Fantasy IX remake is going to be an action game, not turn-based? He will hope not. Um, the whole Midori thing on Twitter, I saw that broke out and how that ended. Um, apparently some of his leaks were right, some of his leaks were wrong. Um, I think that's what a lot of people are saying like they don't put a lot of stock in like anything outside of like persona so for that person or him to say that final fantasy 10 remake is not in the works um it's it's not being developed so everybody needs to cut down you know cut back on that um since everything fell out for him outside of that like for what happened to him i'm not gonna go in detail with that i mean you guys can see that on twitter and all that um but i'm not here for that but his credibility for anything outside of Persona is that's what he's famous for, for leaking Persona stuff and stuff like that. Um, I don't, I, I'm still going to hold out to hope that maybe there is a Final Fantasy X remake down the road. I don't think it's like, it's going to be coming out anytime soon. Um, I think Final Fantasy IX remake is going to be like, the first thing is going to be out. Um, Kingdom Hearts 4 is still a while, a while out. Um, we haven't seen anything on that. Uh, Yoshi P did also state that Final Fantasy 14, he's working on that, you know, the expansion, the updates for that. But he's also said he's working on multiple projects. 
um, as well, other stuff. So that makes me tell, that tells me that I think he is working on Final Fantasy XVII. You know, he did say that he would love to have somebody else do it. Um, but I think that with Creative Business Unit 1 is so busy with Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3, they're busy with, like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 4. Uh, they're also, you know, if they're working on Final Fantasy X Remake, um, maybe just helping, you know, source out the other devs or something. You know, they got all their projects in work. So, like, maybe they're booked. So that's why Creative Vision 3 is making Final Fantasy 17. Which, to me, I think that's going to be a PlayStation 6 game. Um, as far as Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 3, um, what I want to see from that, um, I do think that it's going to be coming out in less than three years. I think they want to get out in 2027. I think Hamaguchi did say he wants to get out in three years. I couldn't find the article anymore, but I remember reading that. Um, because most of the work is done because of Rebirth. And, of course, Remake with Midgar. They're going to return to Midgar. Unless they completely change that. Um, and they had an interview. Like, they had people on stage. And they was talking and doing interviews and stuff like that. And a lot of people are thinking that. Us are hearing that the potential title card for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3 would be Final Fantasy VII Reborn. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, that actually fits, like, the remake, Rebirth, like, Reborn, like, you're, something's born again, like, you're reborn as something completely new, like, remake, you're remaking something, it's a rebirth, like, something's being re rebirth, it's a reborn again, like, somebody's born again, um, so it kind of makes sense, right, Final Fantasy VII Reborn makes a lot of sense, um, as Kamiguchi did say that, uh, Reload and, like, Revengeance is not on the card, uh, they can't use Reunion because they've already been used for Crisis Core. Um, so we got, we got all that stuff. Um, as far as what I want to see in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3, um, I do want I do want them to like make like the the terrain actions. I want them to like give us like a dedicated jump button where Cloud can jump and then he can like grab a hold of ledges and climb up that way, make it more smoother. If you can't do that, at least make this terrain traversal a little bit smoother. It's a little clunky at times, and you think you can climb up this way, but you can't, right? Give us more freedom like they said it's going to. Um, another thing I want, want I want to see for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3, I love the idea that we can make up to three different party sets. Like, three different party, you know, like, you can have Cloud and, like, Tifa Barrett for one. If you want Cloud, uh, Aerith, and 13 yada 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 right i want them to instead have three give us like five or six sets right that way we can change in and out like having more variety like say i want this party here for this situation or that situation or this situation you know you know what i mean at least give us at least give us one or two more extra slots that's what i ask um i do hope that <clears throat> another thing i, I do want to say I know there's a lot of people that don't like Chadley. I th he thinks they think he's annoying. He talks too much. It's like you do realize that Chadley is only like he's optional, other than like the first story part. Um, Chadley doesn't really get involved in the story at all after that. Like he he's there. You can talk to him. He gives he offers you materia. He offers you like summon battles and VR stuff and extra you know rewards. And if you do the if you do the open world part, yeah, he's going to be involved because he wants you involved in the world intel, right? That's the way it's about world intel, so that battle intel. <clears throat> but I do say this: if you're going to bring Chadley back for part three, um, let's not let's not do the world stuff anymore, right? Let's not do the world intel. Let's not climb towers and stuff like that. Now, if we have a new region, maybe we do like a tower, right? Maybe say, hey. Uh, I want you to expand, like, we'll say the Wu-Tai region, right? Um, if we're going to revisit all the regions again, I don't want to redo the stuff I've done in Rebirth. So, they're going to have to rework the world a little bit, especially for, like, the high wind and, like, the weapons and, and stuff like that. Um, I will say this. I love the open world part. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But 
if they're gonna have us redo it all, like in, in part three, it's gonna drag on a little bit. I think a lot of people they they loved it. They enjoyed it. Like they loved like the exploration, a battling, the theme, and being with your characters, and just you know, even though you're activating towers, you're fighting these mobs and stuff like that, right? We all we all. Know. I will say this. For like the secret bosses and stuff like that, they can put in like caves, right? Maybe you take on a side quest, and there's a cave. They go down a, a battle. It's kind of like it's kind of like Elden Ring, right? You find a cave, you, you explore the cave, you get rewarded for it, like either like a weapon or armor. Um, but you fight like a secret boss, right? A, a, a rare enemy or, or something, right? I think. Instead of having Chadley be everything for us, because you've basically done the battle intel, you've done the world intel. What else do you need to do? Um, Chadley can hold like special VR fights. Let's just say he has access to say, hey, uh, I found old files on this Project G, right? Maybe we can fight Genesis as a secret boss or Minerva or something, right? Maybe we get to fight something like that or maybe Omega Weapon. I can see that happening, but as far as like VR fights, we've done it for two games in a row. For me, I think we need to slow the roll on the VR fights. Um, if they want to drastically change it and give us like a, a, like Max and a lot of his friends or other people have been saying, uh, shout out to those people. Um, I think if you get the VR fights. At least be able to make it where we can change the scenery. Maybe we can change it like ne the Nebo region, or maybe the Wu Tai region, or Cosmic Canyon region. Stuff like that to change it up a little bit. Um, and please, for for crying out loud, um, the game hardly has any loading, right? It's snappy, right? The combat simulator game, uh, when you load in between battles, it takes it takes almost a, like 30 seconds for it to load up the next battle. That is like the hardest loading in the game, and I don't quite understand why that is. Like, it should, sure, you gotta load in the assets and stuff down the training, the training facility, but got a PS5, it shouldn't take 30 seconds to load in a battle. Um, that's just me. Personally, for me, I think that, especially the Knights of the Round and stuff like that, they should be like in the world, and like, uh, Knights of the Round should be like a story, like. Part of the story is like you overheard that there is a like an ally of the old republic or something, right? Maybe or or etc. Use the use these knights to fight against Genova or something, or something, something along the lines like to help fought off like the things that threaten the planet, right? Maybe the maybe the knights of the round will be like a planetary defense system that. You can harness the power of that and defeat your foes ahead of you. Like, make it part of the story. I think if Hamaguchi and them can, like, nail that part, make him, like, part of the story, lengths of the round, I think us as players would be like, whoa, like, this is so sick. Um, as far as, like, summons, I get it that they done it in the VR because it's easier that way and, like, people love fight summons and stuff like that. It's fun. But Final Fantasy VII is all about finding material, finding the summons. I do like the lore of the summons and stuff like that. I, I think that's fantastically done. Um, but I don't see how... There's not going to be many regions left. You got the Northern region, you got the Wutai region, and the Middle region, right? You got like three more regions left. It's like... We gonna do with the summons there? Are you gonna have summon lore, or are you gonna have it just where you just find the summons out? But maybe Charlie says maybe something happens to Charlie. Not saying anything bad about him. Maybe something happens to Charlie where he don't have VR fights anymore. And he says, "Hey, Cloud, I I just something bad happens maybe in the during the war that he lost you know, he lost the technology to be able to create material now, right? So maybe now." Since the planet is just trying to defend itself, that we find like caves or or something, maybe like the Setra caverns opens up or temples become available where you can like fly there and you complete like trials and stuff with like that, or like, combat trials. Like you fight like this, 
like the secret guardian of that temple or cavern that the Cetra has there to protect it from like summer material or like special high like high octane material or something stuff like that like we still got the contain material out there um you still got you know, remove material you still got all kinds of material out there like yes yeah, sh um, shield material um stuff like that there's still a lot of stuff out there and a lot of enemy skills been missing um i do hope that we still get like get to see like some enemies return um uh, we didn't we didn't get to like the, the triceratops tank uh guy we didn't get to see him so i wonder if they're saving that for part three um there's there's just some things that we, i hope we see something different i don't want to see like oh we're, i got a ton of vr fights again for part three if you don't change things up people are, are just gonna be like oh okay we, we know what to do this is just the same old same old right um that saying that reminds me of cloud like uh, not cloud but like like barrett talking to cloud in the ending of intermission it's like Hey Cloud, you you walked you ran this routes so many times, right? Same old, same old, right? And like I, I just thought of that, it made me smile. But you guys know what I mean. Like part three is gonna be incredible. Uh, we're gonna have weapons. We're gonna have the knights around. They want to give us more freedom. We're gonna have underwater uh, traversal. We're gonna have the high wind. We're gonna have uh, Vincent and Sid. Like they're gonna have to nail their combat system. Uh, I want to see like uh, tri uh, trio attacks, uh, tri attacks, what I'm gonna call it, or, or trio dual attacks, uh, trio attack techs, or whatever you want to call it. I want to see triple team. I want to see that. I want to see like Cloud, Barrett, and Aerith. Uh, not Barrett, Aerith, but Cloud, Tifa, and <laughs> Barrett. Excuse me. Um, I want to talk about Aerith's uh, spoiler. Um, you guys can watch that. And my spoiler review thing um, but I do hope that we get like to see the cloud teeth and Barrett like at the ending of Reapers you saw them do like their ultimate big attacks with each other I think they're teasing triple team attacks would it be nuts it would be so epic guys if we get Final Fantasy 7 remake part 3 or reborn and they introduce try a triple team attack and you open up with like Tifa, Cloud, and Barrett doing like the like it'd be instead of like the Avalanche two step, it'd be the Avalanche like try, try step or something or or some sort of like that. I, I don't know what they're gonna call it, but just imagine, guys, like Cloud and like Tifa and Barrett, like Tifa and Cloud be doing like fancy like swirling moves where they're like the fists and kicks and call sword, and then Barrett's just like. You know, shooting his gun arm, you know, it'd be super sick. So, something like that. Um, or like, like, Sid lifting Cloud up in the air and like, uh, and like, you see, I don't know, somebody else in the air made Yuffie, like, just swing Cloud down full force and like, he smashes his sword down on the enemy, like, full force, like, massive damage. So, uh, um, I could see that. It takes like two ATB bars to to do that, right? Uh, maybe. I know it'd be oh super OP if they uh, if they do all that route. So if not, it'd be like the pips, right? I love the pip. Um, so, anyways, that's what I want to see in part three. I do. Uh, they do say that they want like the the biggest bold thing they want to do. They want to surpass the ending of the original game with this trilogy and make people just sit there and go. Yeah, I see why. I see why not none of the stuff made sense in the in the ending of the first two games. But boy, did that ending of the trilogy really hit me hard. Like two points. Like what a magical ride this was. Like for the 13, 14 year ride this been. Give us an ending that surpasses the original game. We'll sit back and just be like, wow. What a trilogy this was. Like, it didn't make sense at first. I was all on board. I was starting to question things. But, man, that ending just answered it all. May it, may it give us a little interpretation? Left the interpretation for us to be like, 
So what's this mean for Final Fantasy VII going forward? Like, what's the devs going to do with Final Fantasy VII move forward? Um, as an IP, as a franchise, right? A lot of people, including me, is like, they're not going to stop doing Final Fantasy VII stuff. I want to see original devs are like, this is our swan song for the trilogy, and we're done. Like, this could be the swan song of trilogy of Final Fantasy VII. Say, after this, we're done. Like, if the younger generation wants to take over Final Fantasy VII, that's on them. Because a lot of people, including Katasi, are in the 40s and 50s or higher. And this is a swan song for me. Um, I think that Final Fantasy VII can live on in a younger generation. Because Hamaguchi grew up playing Final Fantasy VII. And now he's a co-director. A rebirth. Uh, he actually he was a co-director for all for all three of them. He's actually the, the director director for part three, I think. Definitely can see the part two influence of Hamaguchi, for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm super hyped for that. Um, so there's there is one I'm looking forward to for part three. I'm super hyped for it. Um, I do think that we get like a teaser, I think sometime next year, probably around the summertime. And we'll probably get... We probably won't get any more trailers or ideas and stuff for that or, or updates until like 2026. If the games come out in 2027, it'd be like the same marketing strategy for Rebirth. Or we might not see anything for like a year after the teaser. And they might have interviews after the teaser. And then it'll be, it'll be quiet. And then they'll give us a trailer around the Summer Games Fest in 2026. And then maybe Gamescom or at Tokyo Game Show to stay to play or something. And then we'll get another trailer to celebrate the, you know, the anniversary of Final Fantasy VII. And then the game launches like a month or so afterwards. It'll be. It'll be in 2027. That'll be the 30th anniversary of FS7. So it makes a lot of sense. Now for the big kahuna in, the, in this whole podcast I, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about so did you play art rory 4 remake yet i want to see your review i want to see what you guys what your thoughts are did you like it did you hate it um what's your thoughts on it before you guys get mad at me i didn't play re4 re2 remake i got to the point where i've met mr x um i just don't think I can get through that game. I probably could, but with the whole like, it's, it's the the whole hard take and like the survival horror and like your ammo is very limited. And people say, well, you gotta like shoot the zombie once and move past them. It's like, yeah, but you still remember the zombies there, so you gotta go back through and shoot them again. Um, so run out of ammo and stuff for like that. I know skill issue. I need to learn how to aim. But it's also like the tight corridors. It's just for me. It's like. It's a little too condensed. I'm not saying RE2 Remake is bad. It's still a highly praised game, right? It sold like 14 million copies. It's like over 14 million. It became like the, the highest selling Resident Evil game of all time. Like Resident Evil 5 was like the highest selling, right? Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Village sold like 10 million. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake sold over 7 million. So, anyways. I tried to dumb all right. Played it long like, you know, last year. I played it. I was like, man, this is sick. This is so sick. I, I bought the game. I pre-ordered it. But it's just I didn't get around to play it. I was so busy playing other games. I had like Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy, Dead Island 2, Spider-Man 2, um, so on and so forth, right? And I just kept putting it off. It's like, man, if I'm gonna play RE4 remake, I play RE2 remake. I just kept making myself feel like I gotta play that game, right? I gotta play Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 2 Remake 4 4. I say, wait a minute here. I already know the story of 2, right? I played 2 so many times. Um, so, I got to the point where it's like, yeah, I needed to uh, play that, but it's like, I already know the story. So it's like, I know that about Leon and, and Claire and stuff like that. Now, I don't know the Claire side of things for after the events of Raccoon City. Well, Re Resident Evil 4 Remake. Let's get into it. Game's incredible. Game's phenomenal. I love the game. I love the game uh, gameplay of it. I love the exploration of the game. I didn't grab everything. I spent a lot of time searching for stuff, but it's like the story kept pushing me forward. I was like, I'm, I'm, 
I'm intrigued. I want to see what's going on next, right? I want to see more. Um, so that's what I did. I just kept going, but I missed out a, like a gun or two. I missed out on some um, some treasures or some jewel, jewel, jewels to put inside the treasures to make them worth more, more money. So I missed out on a few things. I also missed out on a trophy or two um, for not exploring everything. I'll, I'll say this. The game is incredible. I love the enemy types. I do like the story. I do like the bosses. I do like how Leon is. I like the game made me love Leon more as a character than RE2 Remake did. RE2 Remake felt like, yes, he's a rookie cop. He doesn't understand, like, like he's never been in the zombie apocalypse, so he's, uh, he's like, learning on the fly. He's, like, you can tell that he's, like, really overwhelmed by, like, the zombies and stuff like that, so he can't move, like, he can hardly, he can't hardly dodge unless you, like, you rotate his character, like, he can, he can dodge around zombies and stuff like that, even Mr. X, if you know what you're doing. But man, playing Resident Evil 4 Remake with Leon with the parry system, with the knifing, you know, knife system where you can knife the enemies even faster. Um, you can do like roundhouse kicks, uh, soup, back suplexes. You can, uh, um, you name it, right? You can like stab the guy in the, in, 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 in the neck and stuff like that, or like, do like stealth kill. That's incredible. The story with like Luis and Ashley, uh, Ada, and Leon, and like you know tracking down Sadler and tracking down like um, oh Ramon, right? And find out about Krauser's involved, right? His old buddy, his old war buddy that trained him, that trained Leon um, as a rookie, and uh, the boss fights are sick. I really enjoy the boss fights. There's only like a couple of sections of the game I actually had I had this. Um, it was mostly on me. I didn't understand what the heck I was supposed to do here, um, and I was like, you know what? This game is just like, it's just it's just oof, man. It's rough. It's like so rough. I just like couldn't figure things out. But then the friends like, hey, just you do know if you do this, this, and this, right? It makes it a lot easier. I did it. I got through it. And then or it's like RNG is like. I was, I'm trying to like spoilers here. You're in like the the waste disposal, and you and you. I ran into the regenerators. Not fun. Those things are creepy. They're annoying to fight. They're probably one of the worst enemies in the game. But I don't like fighting. Um, do I like their concept? Yeah. Like it makes you want to be grossed out, creeped out to the point. It's like you can't you can't react fast enough, right? You're just sitting there going, "Oh crap!" Like oh crap, this, these enemies are so, like, creepy looking. Um, so it's like, that section, it's like, I had to rush back and save Ashley because the bad guys of Las Plagas enemies are, like, trying to kidnap her. And she's holding on to, like, the, the, the wheel to keep the, to keep the, the extended bridge up. So anyways, you got the super reset bridge generator, right? You shoot, you shoot him in all the weak spots, then he comes back up and like, rawr, you know, he just has a spike thing. I tried like three like three times or so, I'm like, what the heck, how come I can't get back there? Or if I shoot the enemies, the more come. It's like, what the heck, what's going on here? So I just took a break for a while. I came back like a day or so. And it was a perfect run. Went there, hit the switch, came, I ran all the way back. I know the thing was right behind me, and as she's still hanging out, I got across the bridge. I, she she got off the wheel. The bridge went down. I saw the regenerator went back to his normal spot, and I fought the bad guys. She got saved. We killed a bunch of rats. I killed that thing. Uh, uh, afterwards, actually, I made I made him fall in the trap. That's why I did. That's pretty funny. And then the other one is like, you're in the specimen, the specimen. Um, I forget what it's called. This specimen, uh, it's a cooler uh, building. It's like really cold. You got these bags, these big, like, hanging bags. And I didn't realize it, but the, there's three regenerators in it. I got two really pissed off ones. You got the one in the very beginning. I went past them. I fought, well, I fought him the first time. It's like, how in the heck? I ran out of bullets. I died. 
few times. I was like, how in the heck do I get through this? He's like, hey, you do know you can't sneak. I was like, why? You can sneak past these guys? And sure enough, I sneaked past them, got through the, got through the thing. I was like, why can't I do this before? So, anyways, other than that, um, there was only like one boss fight that's kind of annoying to fight. And that was, um, that was Sadler. I think Sadler at the end, it's like he's moving all over the place. He got to shoot the eyeballs off him. I didn't die once, but I came close to dying a couple of times. I had to heal up. I think I was running low on heals and like ammo. I guess I had my Magnum. I had like a few shots left. So when it reached that point where you're supposed to shoot his true self, um, then he gave you the rocket launcher to shoot that. And uh, I beat the game. And it's like, the game overall, other than those two couple of spots and the regenerators being kind of, kind of eh, I mean, I didn't really care for them, even though I, I love the concepts. I am at the point now, I'm like, okay, let me sit back, let me just let this game settle in my myself, uh, settle in my mind, so. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I started playing on PC, and of course I had to like close down my file and reopen it again, because it started whacking out on me, like the... At, like mouse and keyboard, I want to like open up the magnifier and like take screenshots. That is weird. Just glitching out a little bit. I fixed it. It's not the game's fault. Um, so I played on PlayStation 5. The haptic feedback is amazing. The uh, the adaptive triggers are amazing. Um, I do like the game overall. I think the length of the game, you know, it felt like I spent 30 hours in that Resident Evil game. I was like, this is long. This is a super long game. Um, so it's like starting to feel like a little dragged out, but then I, okay, I'm getting very close to the end. Let's just go ahead and try to finish. I finished it that night. Um, it was, a, what a wild time, right? Um, I, I can see why a lot of people love Resident Evil 4, uh, Resident Evil 4. I did play a little bit of the original game. I, uh, went back and played like 45 minutes of it while I was being stuck on Remake. I can see why people loved it. Um, but it's not for me. Uh, the controls are a little slow. Uh, I, especially you can't move while aiming. You can in remake. Uh, I do like the over-the-shoulder camera better. I'm um, your Leon's not. He has the same move set. Like he can still hop over fences and stuff like that. Um, he still has actions he can take. Um, but I like remake better. Uh, I think remake assists me better. I uh, I love the game. I I think it's phenomenal. Um, I'm, it gets me excited for Resident Evil 9, uh, especially with all the leaks and rumors about like possibly Leon being the main protagonist. Maybe Jill's going to be back. Who knows, right? Who knows? Um, we're not going to probably see that game for a while. Probably next year when we get a review for it. Um, so other than that, I've been playing just Rebirth and just going back through that game. What a magical ride that was. I know I made a video... I was so pissed off about what happened at the end. I just didn't understand what was going on. What, they, what were they trying to do, right? They're trying to confuse us. You guys didn't probably watch my second review after I calmed down. Because my initial review, I gave it a 7.5, right? For Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And stuff like that. So that's why with Resident Evil 4 Remake, I had to take a step back. From a couple of, few areas, I'm like, eh, you know what? That's just not my strong suit. It's probably just me. I don't want to judge the game based on a couple of areas I didn't like. Um, so, I learn. I, that's why I learn. You know, I'm still a content creator. I'm still learning. I'm still kind of newish. Um, but for me, it's all about learning and understanding. Okay, if you're gonna review games, take a step back, process everything, come back with a clear mind, then give a honest review. So here's my honest review of uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. If I would have played it last year, with the same mindset I had this year, play it, beat it, come on, you know, try it. I know you, like, you play Resident Evil 3 Remake, you beat Resident Evil Village, play Resident Evil 4, right? You have bought it, you pre-ordered it, you played it download, loved it, but play the game. If I would have played a game last year, it would have competed for me, for Goaty. I think it would have been between... Spider-Man 2 and Resident Evil 4 Remake. I think Final Fantasy 16 is still a great game. It's just, it doesn't... It doesn't hit to me... It doesn't hit me like Resident Evil 4 Remake did. Or Spider-Man 2. Um, 
Resident Evil 4 remake to me it's definitely a 9 out of 10. I th is, is it a perfect game? No. There's, there's a couple of times that I thought maybe it can be a little bit better in a couple of sections. Um, but until I figured out how to get through it, the concepts are cool, right? I, it's a cool concept that they want you to be like a little bit uh, intimidated, right? Act on your, uh, act on your like your fears, your emotions more than like your mind. So it's not really a knock on that. It's still a nine out of ten. I think Resident Evil 4 remake. I'm thinking about going back through the game. I'm currently playing through uh, separate ways a little bit. Um, but I still need to like figure out how to get through a certain spot like, again. Yeah, Probably just me. I'm not figuring out yet. But separate ways is pretty good. I, I love the way that they're expanding upon like the ending of uh, Resident Evil 4 remake. Like whoa, like this expected twist. Um, so you get to see more of that. I see what she was up to. Luis is up to right. You get to see more of him and more of Ada. You get to play them. Um, I think separate ways is fun so far. So yeah, Resident Evil 4 remakes a nine out of ten. So. To wrap this podcast up, we'll talk about what's going on with Concord and Sony, what I think is going to happen um, with them, um, about their PlayStation Studios and stuff like that, and the PlayStation Showcase and whatnot. Um, so, to start off with Concord, there's a lot of reports saying that Concord didn't show up in like, any of like, the store pages for, like, uh, if you pre-order the game, you can play the beta. The beta is supposed to be like crossplay, right? It's supposed to be like on PC and PlayStation 5. And I think that's it, right? But for some reason, it wasn't show up on the storefronts. And now it is. Like Sony woke up and said, oh, our mistake. Well, if you're going to play be crossplay, at least you put it on the storefront, right? I haven't played the beta. I'm still waiting for this weekend if I get a chance. Um, I do have family coming out, so I don't know if I'll have, like, a first impressions video on that. But if I do, you guys will probably see a video on it. Um, it looked interesting. I think it's going to be a, a game that could be a lot of fun. Um, there is still got a lot of mixed uh, feedback by a lot of people, like, especially about the storefront issues and beta. Um, the game's going to be, what, $40? A $40, $50 charge? So it's not like a free, like uh, a free, one of those free games. Um, a lot of people compare it to like, not Apex, but, oh, I'm trying to think what, Valorant. Yeah, Valorant, yeah. Valorant's free, right? You get to play for free. So people are comparing that to us, like, well, if Valorant's free, I can just play that. Why are you expecting me to pay a $40 game for, because that's what Concord is, kind of, kind of like Valorant. That's what a lot of people are saying. I haven't played Valorant, so I can't say. Um, I hope Concord does well. I, I hope that Sony uh, does well with this game, and I hope a lot of people like it, but they're going to have to get their act together with like the crossplay system and having the storefront, which what, I, apparently they did. I will wait and see. Wait and see how it goes. Um, as far as PlayStation goes, uh, they, they did confirm they're at the uh, Tokyo Game Show for the first time since 2019. I looked up at the list of stuff they showed off. They showed off like Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man was there. Uh, no, not Spider-Man. Um, was it Gran Turismo Sport? They had Death Stranding for some reason they showed. Um, I think what other games? They showed off like a, a few other good games. I was like, wow, they actually showed off some bangers there. So maybe we'll see some bangers there. I talked to some people. It's like, maybe... As it depends on Sony's time slot. They get like an hour or two to like talk about games. Maybe they'll have a PlayStation showcase at Tokyo Game Show. Wouldn't that be kind of neat, right? Um, I talked to my insider, and he as he goes, I haven't heard any new news. I haven't talked to my his, his sources, but he still believes that a PlayStation showcase is going to happen this fall. So, Tokyo Game Show appearance. By Sony for the first time since 2019. Possibly could see a place in showcase there. Do I do I think it's gonna happen? Yeah, I think it's a good chance. Do I am I confident say it's gonna be there or shut up and uh, expect it? No. So gonna wait and see. I'm I'm about 75% confident that they got something they want to show. Because 
if the leaks are still right, they got Venom coming out next year. Um, they got, like, Naughty Dog came out, like, in the months past recently, talking about, like, you know, Neil Druckmann's like, excited to see how we players feel about their new IP. Like, he's, he's super excited for it. Um, like, he's hyped for, you know, of course he's going to be hyped for his own game, but it seems like it's a pretty ambitious title. Like, they're really excited to see people see this new IP either. I'm excited for it. And a lot of people are sick and tired of seeing The Last of Us. So, hey, new IP. Um, the, the, uh, Sucker Punch talked about Ghost of Tsushima as celebrated his fourth year anniversary already, which is nuts. Um, we're still waiting on CEA on Ghost of Tsushima 2 on that. Um, so, we got a lot of games. You know, we need to see stuff that's going to be coming out, you know, 2025 and 2026. They see more on Death Stranding too, Right? See stuff like that. Um, I still think, uh, even if it's just a state of play, like a 45-minute state of play, just focusing on, like, first-party titles and stuff. Like, Square Enix is going to be at Tokyo Game Show. Capcom's going to be at Tokyo Game Show, I think. So... We're going to see more in Monster Hunter Wilds, and I can't wait to pre-order that game. Um, but yeah, I still think we're going to see we're going to see some stuff uh, from Sony that, whoa, wait, I didn't expect to see that, you know, that type of thing. Um, anyways, that's pretty much all I got for you guys for this time. Uh, I know I'm, I'm excited for GTA 6. I'm still got to play Death Stranding 1 get through that to see if I want to get Death Stranding 2. I'm, I'm excited for it. It looks great. Um, Monster Hunter Wild is my most anticipated game, like I said earlier in the podcast. Um, anything else I'm looking forward to? Black F6. Uh, I'm definitely going to get that. I still want to get the, the Xbox games for 2025. They look incredible. Um, I hope that, you know, maybe we get to see uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth PC port get announced, Final Fantasy 16 PC port get announced because Yoshi P and them said, hey, yeah, uh, we're still working hard on the PC port of Final Fantasy 16, and it will not take a year for us to talk about that or show it off or something like that um, or get it out, right? So we should see something on that soon, either at Tokyo Game Show or maybe at the Game Awards. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, like, I know they're working hard on the PC port and also part three. Um, you know, if they can, if they can release a decent PC port of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, maybe I'll stream that for you guys. Maybe I'll stream the PC version of it. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, as far as me streaming, I'm not sure what to stream first. Um, I might go back to like playing like Monster Hunter again, just uh, have some laid back stream, um, just work on my character and get that ready for you know, I guess get that ready for. The end game of Iceborne, I did that for PS5. Uh, updates on that, I did beat uh, Fatalis finally on PS5. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Super hype. Uh, might get back to Monster Hunter Rise and beat that. I do have uh, Sunbreak on that. Um, so I might stream that again. Um, so I got some games I want to stream. I, I might stream Resident Evil 4. We'll see. No, no uh, promises there. I already played a game, so... I don't know if I'll stream that, but if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below where you guys want me to start streaming. Is there any recommendations you guys want to see? Um, and uh, I can't wait. I do want to update my PC here. I do want to get more storage, uh, probably during the winter holidays season. So I got plenty of storage so I can download lots of cool games and start streaming. I do want to come back to stream on Twitch. Um, and also still making content on YouTube. So... Thank you guys for listening to the j 19 Gaming Podcast of July 18th of 2024. Sorry, I had to look at my phone for the date. It's been a wild year. So, me keeping track of dates, what day it is. I know it's Thursday. So, that yeah, July 18th, 2024, game, J19's Gaming Podcast. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of all, all the topics I covered. I guess excited about me coming back to streaming. What's the recommendation? What's your guys' uh, expectation for PlayStation Studios, for Square Enix, Capcom? Um, what, what do you guys think of Resident Evil 4 Remake? Was it your uh, one of your Game of the Year contenders for 2023? What is your ga uh, Game of the Year for 2024 contender? Me as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I abs 
absolutely love this. I cannot wait to go back and play it again. I was going to play more of it tonight, but I had to get this podcast out. Um, I had like a bad case of hiccups earlier. I was like, great. So I had to postpone another video. Um, but no, I got over it, as you can tell. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of everything I talked about. What is your thoughts? Are you guys super excited about gaming in 2025? What you guys hope to play at the tail end of this year? Are you guys excited for Tokyo Game Show? Are you guys excited for the Game Awards? I know I am. I think Rebirth is going to win a bunch of awards. Um, game of the Year is still one of the best games to win. It. Um, I do have Shadow of the Earth Tree. I still need to go back and play that. Um, I do want to play Separate Ways. Stuff like that. So I got a lot of stuff to play. I got Astrobot coming. I got Dragon Quest 3 coming later on this year. Black F6. So I got a lot to play. And I'm getting Black F6 on PC. So I'll probably stream that too. We'll maybe do some matches and stuff. Have some fun. So anyways. With that said. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of the J19's Game Podcast of July 18th, 2024. If you guys are having a wonderful day, wonderful night. Hope you guys are. Keep on keeping on. Be safe out there. Be nice to each other. Enjoy some awesome gaming. I am J19. I am back. Again, I appreciate guys for love and support as always. If you guys would, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. If you guys want more of J19's Game Podcast, if you guys want gaming in general, feel free to do that. I'll have links in the description below for my Twitch, Twitter, Discord. Feel free to give me a follow on both of those, all three of those, and join Discord. We can talk about many, many games, and I hope to see you guys there. Until next time, you guys be safe. Have a wonderful night. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Take care.